The vagus nerves, what are they and why are they important? There's a lot of literature surrounding something called the solar plexus. Psychologists talk about using our gut, like a gut instinct. We feel truth a lot of times down here and not necessarily up here. We think with our mind, but we kind of know with our gut. You've heard of that expression before. And I don't know too much about chakras, but I know that there's some systems out there that believe that someone's inner light is right here. Uh, the solar plexus, solar like the sun, is this what this bifurcation area looks like. So these nerves come out the top of the neck and they're pretty much straight freeway system of nerves up until about right here where they branch off and go into different directions and sections and things kind of like our framework and they wander to different organs. In fact, that's what vagus means in Greek. V-A-G-U-S means the wandering nerve. You know, when my dad was really, really sick um, several years before his cancer had developed, he, had, he ended up in the hospital and it was so bad we thought we might lose him. He had a specialist in the hospital for his heart, for his liver, for his lungs and his digestive system. And, and thank goodness the nurses were paying attention because he had like nine specialists and there was, I guess, contradictory information and medication information and, you know, things that can happen when a person's in intensive care for about a week or so. And, um, you know, I asked the doctor out in the hallway, I was a young chiropractic student, and I said, you know, I'm a, in chiropractic school and I'm learning about something called the vagus nerve. Now, the vagus nerve travels to every single major organ of the body up to the first part of the large intestine. What do you think the odds are that there might be some vagal nerve dysfunctional kinds of problems going on with my dad right now. I mean, he's got all these problems and the nerve goes to all these areas. What do you think? And he said to me, you know what? Honestly, we accidentally cut vagus nerve pretty frequently in surgery by accident. And as long as the person's other nerve on the other side is intact and all those branches are working healthfully, I don't think it makes a bit of difference for people. And um, I didn't know any better to, you know, accidents happen, but to be so nonchalant about severing a person's vagus nerve um, is, uh, is a bit ironic to me. You know, the interesting thing with the vagus nerve is that 90% of its nerve impulses, so you have nerves that go from brain to body and body up to brain, but 90% of the vagus nerve information is actually going to the brain. And the reason that's important is because vagus nerve innervates our diaphragm muscle. And as you can see here in the upper neck, C3, 4, 5, and 6 has direct linkage to the phrenic nerve, which goes into the diaphragm as well. So what I'm saying is largely the diaphragm muscle that should control our breathing when we are in a relaxed state is regulated by the parasympathetic part of your central nerve system which is in charge of calming you down. So people are predominantly either fight or flight um, or they're in rest and digest mode. And so the key uh, mode for us to be in most of the day is in this parasympathetic mode. So because most of those nerve impulses are incoming, we can control how we breathe with our belly in order to create this feedback, this calm feedback going up to the brain because we've calmed down our physiology down here by how we're breathing, so that we can convince our thalamus, our triage center of information that's, that's going at like the speed of sound constantly in your brain. We're telling that thalamus that things are calm. It's okay, lay your weapons down, it's peace time. So, if you're like me, there's nothing more boring than thinking about how you breathe. But just get this one skill down and then watch my YouTube video. I'm simply doing high notes, bing, letting it ring out for like five seconds, seconds and then mute it and then boom, and it goes out for six seconds because what it does, and it's tailored to your height, so if you're about five feet tall or five and a half or six feet and over, there's different tracks that will help to pace your breathing and the key is, you breathe in and then you hold it for one second and then you breathe out slightly longer than you breathed in. And what the research shows is that you're now utilizing carbon dioxide. I used to think that carbon dioxide was just a waste product of breathing. Oxygen in, carbon dioxide out. But that's not necessarily the case. We need to utilize carbon dioxide better so that the, 
that the oxygen can get better stripped off of the hemoglobin of our blood and into our cells so we can have more energy and think more sharply as it is sort of a pace car for your breathing. Give that a try, see how that works. Focus on your belly going out without your chest moving and see how you feel after about 10 minutes or so.